Hello, welcome to Lancaster Hi-Fi. I just picked up another Phase Linear preamp. This time, the Phase Linear 2000. This is a stereo preamp, and it's in the wooden case. It needs to be cleaned up, it needs to be gone through. I've already listened to it, it does seem to work. It sounds very nice. Wooden case, and let's look at the back, because that's where one of the major issues with these things lies. And it is these jacks. The jacks are mounted to the circuit board, and so they are prone to breakage. They're prone to uh, cracked solder joints and so on. So that's probably the first thing that I want to go through and check all the solder joints on all those RCA jacks and probably retouch all of those. I don't know what it's like on the inside. If it's like the 4000, then I'll need to redo a bunch of solder joints in here as well. I also have a Phase Linear 200, the power amp counterpart of this preamp. Uh, it's just floating in the case. This one does have screws here holding it down. So we will get in there and see what is up. See what might need to be done. Let's do it. All right, let's get into it. I, those don't look like original screws. Well, they're different from one another for one thing. MDF. It has veneer on the inside as well as the outside. Weighs practically nothing now. The knobs on the Phase Linear 4000 are solid aluminum. These are not. It's always worth repeating when removing these sorts of nuts with a wrench. Don't touch the face plate with the wrench.
ton of 3 amps. Power supply. So the idea here is to to spray the deoxid along the stem of the switch uh, with the unit on its back like this so that the deoxid then just runs down that into the switch itself, into the switch body, and to the contacts. That's the idea at least. And then work it, work it, work it. So I'm inspecting the RCA jacks and there's one that's cracked. I think replacements can be found. It's possible that I can fix it. I've got a solvent adhesive or a solvent cement. It might work, it might not. Depends on what kind of plastic that is. Uh, I've been able to use it though before to fix uh, broken plastic on a tape deck. Let's See if it'll work here. What do we got? Number three, acrylics. Very fast set. Clear water thin solvent cement. Yeah, this stuff's pretty nasty. I got it to fix uh, cracks in dust covers. It'll work on any acrylic plastic. Don't know if that's acrylic plastic. Yeah, I think that did the trick. Handy stuff. Again, nasty. So one of the interesting things about this is that there's not a whole lot to it. Fun of preamps over here. Looks like one op amp for that. Hmm, what's over here? Looks like this is the output over here. And then tone controls here. It looks like a single I don't know if this. I don't know what kind of op amps these are. Uh, full wave bridge rectifier here with four diodes, capacitors for filtering, 470 microfarads, two of them. It's not a whole lot, but pretty small little transformer. But it doesn't require much power. You know, the op amps probably run on something like plus or minus 15 volts. All of these are board mounted. These are board mounted. Volume and balance are not board mounted. Or ambience. I don't know, whatever. So a couple not board mounted, the rest are. And of course all these jacks are board mounted. Looks like a pretty easy just to take the whole thing out, except for dealing with these sorts of connections. But uh, those are just connected to... You know, here's the wire coming in, so that's, those are just outlets. Uh, one of which is, two of which are switched, these two here. So this goes to the power switch, I guess. I've heard these things just sort of look homemade on some level. Pretty straightforward to take it out of the chassis. And, I don't know, getting these out, not thrilled with the idea of, but the board will come off, it's just bolt, it's just, um, yeah, bolted on here, here, and here. 
that will allow easier access to all of the RCA jack solder joints, which um, again, I want to probably retouch all of those just to make sure. I mean, I can inspect them to see if any of them are cracked. Um, this is way, way simpler than the Phase Linear 4000. Phase Linear 4000 has a lot going on inside and this, not so much. So whereas the Phase Linear 4000 has a board on the bottom of the, you know, sort of mounted to the bottom of the chassis and then a bunch of boards slotted into it, all those slot points tend to develop cracked solder joints. Uh, this one, um, you know, just has these switches that are off the main board, connected with these wires, very neat and tidy. Not in a position where either one, either end of those wires needs to flex. Again, probably worth uh, removing this little board here, which should just come right off like that, in order to check the solder joints on all those switches. Check the solder joints on all the pots and should probably replace the capacitors. Uh, why not, right? 470 uh, microfarads, 50 volts. Uh, I've easily got some of those. Now, these are a little bit obscure. These are uh, axial, yeah, axial mounted or axial lead uh, capacitors. But that's not that big a deal, really. Uh, you know, of course, it's nice to replace axial lead capacitors with other axial lead capacitors, but you don't really need to. The, 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 the holes aren't that far apart. Maybe 2.2 microfarads, 50 volts on one of them at least. Might be, you know, if those are 2.2s, those are probably blocking DC blocking capacitors and uh, would be really nice to replace those with film if I've got it. Got film capacitors here. All these green ones are going to be film capacitors. No reason to replace those though. Those should be fine. The only ones that that um, might need to be replaced are the electrolytics. Would definitely like to replace these just because replacing the main filter capacitors is pretty much always a good idea. Maybe could even replace those diodes with newer ones. I don't know. I need to. I need to find a schematic for this though. This looks like it'll be really, really easy to restore. Anyway, so uh, you know, you saw I I went I de put deoxit in all these switches. I'll continue to work those a bit. I'll use deoxit on the selector switch here, and I'll use fader lube in all the pots. I just wanted to give you a shot of the grime on this faceplate. I mean, it's not exceptionally dirty, uh, but it's pretty dirty. Probably hasn't been cleaned since it was new, not like really cleaned. Probably not removed and washed. So that should clean up very nicely. So indeed we have a page on Hi-Fi Engine for the Phase Linear 2000. It has, says that it is from 1976. Gives its frequency response, total harmonic, total harmonic distortion, input sensitivity, a particular note for general purposes is the output given as 2 volts, 10 volt max. So presumably what that means is if you give the phono, the moving magnet, say two millivolts, full scale should give you two volts. Similarly, if you put in 200 millivolt signal on the line, you should be able to get out two volts. But if you put in a higher voltage on the line, you can get up to 10 volts out. And let's see, we do have instruction and owner's manual and series one slash two service manual. That's awesome. I want both of those because I don't know what the ambience knob really does and what the sorts of settings should be and so on. So that's pretty cool.
I was right about those, well, I was partly right about those 2.2 microfarad capacitors. They are blocking capacitors. You can see them there on the outputs. Check that out. You've got two 2.2 microfarad capacitors on each output back to back or positive to positive so that they function as bipolar effectively as only one microfarad rated say at 70 volts instead of 35. Those can be replaced with single one microfarad film caps such as this one here. So took these out and uh, good thing because they're not in spec either uh, but check out how much thicker these leads are and so they didn't just fit in those holes started trying to ream them out ream the holes out with these tweezers that wasn't really doing the trick uh, then with this hand drill which is uh, for cleaning out the um, the hacko desoldering tool nozzle but that's not quite big enough so I found these little mini bitty router bits that I got basically for this purpose and that's done the trick nicely that one fit right in there so now I just need to do the other two holes and we're good so the progress I took the board out of the chassis, although didn't disconnect all the wires, so it was a bit of a pain just having to handle it. But um, I did reflow all the jack joints, reflowed all the switch joints, and I reflowed all the pot joints. I found one, <laughs> um, I think it was like this one or that one, um, that one that uh, had a cracked solder joint. So I was just like, oh, nope, all of them. So that's done. Uh, treated all the pots, treated all the switches. Uh, I have polished the knobs, which now look amazing. I have polished, but I shouldn't have, and of course cleaned before that, the faceplate. The faceplate didn't polish, it's anodized. So I kind of scrubbed off the remnants of the polish. But it does look quite nice now. Um, I cleaned the bottom and top plates they are just stacked right up there. Uh, now we need to deal with this. Oh, I should have mentioned, uh, I also replaced all of the electrolytic capacitors that were out of spec. I replaced the electrolytic capacitors that were there with film capacitors that you see now. Um, I replaced the old filter caps with Rubicons. Um, the others over here. Uh, there were some capacitors over here. Replaced that one. There are 200 microfarad capacitors right there. One was well in spec, the other was out. So I replaced the one that was out. Um, I don't actually have any more new 100 microfarad capacitors, so that's why I didn't just go ahead and replace both of them. Uh, these two 22 microfarad capacitors were bang on 22 microfarads, whereas the new ones that I have measure at 19. Uh, so I just figured I would keep those. Yeah, they're, they're perfect, so fine, keep them. Uh, let's see anything else. I didn't generally check uh, values of non-electrolytic stuff. Um, 
I did not change the diodes. I think they're fine. I mean, they should be fine. Doesn't mean they couldn't be better, but they're fine. Same with the op amps. All right, now I've got to deal with this. It's pretty scuffed and scratched and stained on the top. It's not ugly, uh, but it needs to look a lot better. So I'm going to take some Howards to this. I've got some oak colored uh, Howard's Restore finish that I can use on this. So that's the next step, and then it should be ready to put all back together and give it another listen. So, a couple of finishing touches. Put in new screws here with washers. Uh, they're sort of like uh, these kind of washers. Uh, not because I thought that these would be the most awesome thing, but just because that's all I could find. But actually, you know, they look pretty nice. Not that this is going to be visible, but whatever. You turn it over and you go, oh, that's a nice little touch. Dude. All right, let's check this out. First of all, check out the top. And I'll just say, um, if you don't know about Howard's Restore Finish, you know, it can't do everything in all cases, but man, it is a really nice and quick way to make a scuffed up piece of wood look a whole lot better. The rings and stains and scuffs and scratches are still there, but it just looks good. You know, and if I want to work to get those... You know, this water ring out, and another one over here and here, you know, I could work and do that. Uh, but with a modest amount of effort and a product, <laughs> it just looks a fuckload better. Still getting a little bit of bleeding out of the of this stuff. And I'll show you, you know, it, uh, you know, it's colored. It adds, and that's why it does what it does. All right, let's turn it around, check it out. Yeah, look at that. It's a pretty piece of gear. Yeah. You know, the knobs shined up really nicely. The, the face plate looks really good. Pretty peachy. I'd say that's a restoration. Of course, we need to know how it sounds because uh, you know, really more of the work I did to it was based on the innards rather than the outers. Outards? Innards? Outards? Jeez. Huh. Whatever. All right. The Phase Linear 2000 is now hooked up to the Phase Linear 200. They are both powered up. And I've got tuner, CD player, tape player, and turntable all hooked up. And we can check them all out. Let's start with the phono, because that's where it's at. CD player. Sounds pretty awesome. Let's try the tuner. And tape one. Ah, that is.
Well, that was fun. Everything seems to check out. Not quite sure if I'm 100% on the uh, Alphono preamp, so that might require a little more testing. But I hope you enjoyed this tour of the restoration of the Phase Linear 2000. And I hope that it's instructive for you, not just if you happen to come up with a Phase Linear 2000, but I think I've given you a snapshot of how to approach the restoration of any vintage piece. It's the innards and the exterior. You know, get the innards in shape, replace what needs to be replaced, fix what needs to be fixed, touch up what needs to be touched up, and on the outside, make it beautiful. And this is certainly a beautiful piece. I think you'll agree. So let's go out with a little music. Have a good one, everybody, and I'll talk to you later. <laughs>